So I know you said that there's a roadmap, and I know it's for each person specifically, but would you say most roadmaps for leaders are technical-based or would just maybe soft-based, or what would you say most roadmaps look like? Well, I would say that there are many, many technically proficient and talented people out there who either don't get the opportunity to move into more senior leadership or they do and they wash out. And I think that what makes the difference between somebody who is smart and, you know, maybe technically talented and someone who rises to a leadership level is the soft skills. Um, because it's, you know, as you rise and you have more people under you, cre be, becoming a leader is critical because in order to scale and to have more impact, you have to create what I call followers, followership, oh. which um, means that, you know, you're not going to be able to do everything yourself. And I, I've actually seen this um, pretty often with people that get promoted is that they don't mentally promote themselves and they don't start, mm. or, I mean, and it's not anything, I mean, I'm not being critical at all because I think it's hard to know what you don't know. Right. Um, but again, this is, this is where a coach can help because, you know, I, I understand the things that have to happen as, as you move within an organization and the processes that you need to put in place, the things that you need to focus on in order to build that followership. And um, I, I'll just give you an example of somebody that I worked with who she had been with a company for a long time and she had basically started there at the beginning of her career and she'd risen to be a team leader where she had eight people reporting to her and she was kind of a player coach. So, you know, if somebody had trouble with a project, she could kind of jump in and take it off their plate and do it for them. And, and she was successful. Okay. And so, so much so that she got promoted to be the, the director of the whole department, which had 50 people in it. And when we started working together, she said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so stressed out. I'm working like 70 hours a week. I'm taking work home on the weekend. I don't have time to spend with my kids. Um, and she said, I'm actually thinking about asking for a demotion back to my old job. And I said, well, you know, why don't we see if there's some things that we can put in place that allow you to have more leverage for your position. And really the issue was, is that she was trying to manage a team of 50, the same way that she managed a team of eight. And that's not sustainable. You can't do that. You know, you cannot be involved at the same level, but you can set the expectations. You can focus on training. You can put processes in place. You can delegate. Um, you can use your time more wisely. And so we, we worked on all of that. And actually the first thing that we did was, um, you know, she, I mentioned that she said she had to take her work home on the weekends because she was spending so much time, you know, she had an open door policy and people were coming in her office all day long Whoa. asking her to help solve yeah. problems. Mm -hmm. She closed her door for two hours a day and that immediately had a positive impact on how many hours she was working per week because right. she was able to get her own work done during the day and not have to take that home on the weekends and, you know, steal mm -hmm. time away from her family. So this closing the door kind of led to more focus and time management.